Today I'm joined with my morning coffee and my Wax Pathfinder 10. And I will reveal my honest opinion about it. And for starters I can reveal that it's probably my favorite app under $100, but it's still not for everyone and I have managed to make it sound pretty bad in some of my videos, that's for sure. But let's get started and let's find out who is this little app for. <laughs> First, the feel and the quality of this little app. It's the best one under hundred dollars in my opinion when it comes to quality and feel and looks of it in my opinion. It looks and feels like a more expensive app. The one little con is this handle, it's not really handy. And there's not a lot of room for especially larger hands than mine. And it's not really nice to carry around your hand pouches against the body of the amp all the time. But other than that, the feel and the quality of this amp is really nice and the looks, it's it's beautiful amp for sure. And it does a really good job modeling the Vox EC10 for example. Really nice looking amp. And because this is a really small amp and kind of, kind of portable, you can see the weights and measurements on the screen right now and also little comparison between the weights of the under $100 amps that I have recently tested because this is a little bit heavier than the other amps that I have tested on this price range it's a little bit bulky in that sense and decreases the portability a little bit but still this can work as a portable practice and for sure but the durability factor I think it's pretty nice I think this can probably take a little beating, but not much still. So if you're going to travel with this, be careful. And next, let's look at the features and the overall usability of this amp. Really basic features, especially for this price range. Really standard for a beginner practice amp. For example, the Fender Frontman 10G it has the same kind of setup feature-wise. Gain for adjusting the signal strength at the start of the signal chain. It works with both the overdrive switch on and off. You can adjust the gain with both selections. And then the treble for highlighting the high end frequencies or the smoothen them up. And then the bass for the low end. Highlight the bass or smoothen the bass out and the basic volume for controlling the signal at the end of the signal chain and control the overall loudness. And then the headphone jack and the line out and tiny cone. You have to probably buy an adapter to fit your headphones in. And then one little con about this amp. As you can see there is no aux input. So if you are kind of guy or gal who wants to jam with their favorite tracks through the amp you can't do it with this amp. It's a small con and for example that friend, friend of Frontman 10 c it has an AUX. So I would like that the Vox would include AUX input with this amp too, but it doesn't ruin the amp for me, but it's small con for sure. And there's no other connections of course input here for your quitter instrument. And as you can see this Beautiful little amp is an open back amplifier. I try to zoom in for that speaker. It's a Vox heavy duty loudspeaker, 6.5 inches. And this amp is pretty loud. You can do some small performing this. And for my apartment, I didn't have to use this at full volume so it's it's decent when on the loudness department and as you saw from that crap and as the name suggests this is a 10 watt amplifier and let's play this amp a little bit now and i will play with my epiphone less power special winter edition and then with the ibanez gotrx 72a2 and 
for starters, I can say that in my opinion, with that Ivanage, with some pickup settings and settings of this amp, these don't sound really good together. But and with that Epiphone, this amp is the better fit in my opinion. I don't exactly know the reason for that, but yeah, with that Ivanage, with some settings, not really good fit. You can check my sound demo of this amp. It was done with the Ibanez and yeah, it doesn't sound terrible overall, absolutely not, but with some settings kind of too bright and fuzzy and stuff like that. It could be my playing too, but yeah. Thank you. 
For me this has been an amp that it's, you can get some really nice tones with it, you can make it sound better than the most under $100 amp, even under $150 amps, but at the same time with some settings, yeah, doesn't sound so good, especially with the high treble and low bass settings, in my opinion it doesn't sound really good. and with some distorted solos and lead sections, especially with high treble, the tone is not really nice in my opinion. But for cleans and some classic rock rhythm playing and for some classic rock solos and leads too, especially for classic rock, but maybe in rock in general some solos and stuff like that, this is not the best. But still we have to remember that it's under $100 amp and when I look at the price tag it's one really nice practice amp and great for beginners too. For beginners you maybe have to search for your favorite tones a little bit more than for example with the Fender Frontman 10C. I have noticed that because I had to search for those tones, my favorite tones too and I'm not a complete beginner. Yeah, so that kind of decreases the overall usability just a little bit. I have noticed that in the longer use. But when it comes to tones and sounds, for cleans and classic rock, maybe some rock tones overall too. This is my favorite amp under $100. And because that's the kind of stuff I play nowadays, this is my favorite under $100 amp too. But 
as I mentioned, it, this is not for everyone. But if you love the looks of this and then want easy usability, want to play classic rock and cleans, this is my go to option. Yeah. But for if you want an uh, Fender cleans, then Fender Frontman, then she gives you those. And if you want slightly more portability and want great clean and rock and classic rock tones, then the Black Star Fly 3 is a nice option. And if you want an best metal lamp under $100, in my opinion, the Postcat and a Mini is the best option. Quite easily. Yeah, it's a great little metal lamp. I have videos about all of these on my channel, so check those out if you are interested. And if you want to support my channel, if you are making some kind of gear purchases, you can use my links down in the description. It adds no extra cost for you, but it helps me and my channel. So, pros and cons of this. With some treble settings, the tone is not ideal, in my opinion. And then, this is not for metal and high distortion. No, there is no AUX input and there are not a lot of features. So this is not for feature cravers. And the pros for the price, awesome, clean and crunch tones. And then it looks great, feels great and feels like a high quality amp. And then those open back tones are really nice. I really enjoy those. And this can be played quietly too. It's good for apartments like where I live. And then it's easy to use, simple controls. And then the handle, even though that it's not, it doesn't have a nice feel, it's still sturdy. It's a sturdy handle, but the feel of it, it's, I've noticed in the longer run, only this like um, six months right now, it's not the nicest to carry around because of this handle. And a little bit about those open back tones, as you notice it, this is an open back amp. And what it does, it should make the bass tones a little bit fuller because the coil of the speaker it has basically unlimited amounts of air to suck in. So those bases, space frequencies are a little bit more fuller. And it overall tone it kind of fills the room. I have noticed that with other amps on this price range, this kind of special, unique because this open back thingy. So if you want those room filling tones for cleans and classic rock and grunts, this is a really nice option and definitely worth money. But for metal heads, this is not the best option in my opinion. I also have a video on my channel where I play with this with a cheap distortion pedal so you can check how that sounds and make your mind if you think that this can be used for metal with the distortion pedal. So shortly with this for if you want an affordable beginner and practice amp, great option. And you don't need metal tones or lots of features, you want a great clean crunch tones, maybe for classic rock for example, and you like an open back tones, then this is a great option. And overall this is my favorite amp under $100. So thanks for watching, leave a comment, leave a question if you have one, hit the like button and stay safe and hopefully I will see you again soon.